Welcome to Learner's Mate. In this video we are going to discuss the Mahamegvahna's dynasty as well as career and achievements of Kharvela. So, let's learn. The Hatigumpha inscription mentions that Kharvela belonged to the Mahamegvahna family of the Chedi clan. The Chedis were originally ruling in Madhyadesa or Magadh and it has been suggested that a branch of this royal family of the Hori ambiguity came to Kalinga and established its sway over it. We do not know when they migrated to Kalinga, but from the Hatigumpha inscription it becomes apparent that Kharvela was the third member of the Kalingan Chedis. Kharvela is introduced as Arena Maharajena, Mahamegvahenena and Chitarajvaswadhanena. Each part of the expression has admitted of controversies. Barua reads Ara as Veera meaning hero, but explains it as a royal title Aira meaning Swami, Master or Lord. Mahamegvahna is considered to be the grandfather of Kharvela, the founder of the dynasty in Kalinga which came to be known as Mahamegvahna after his name. Like the Satavahanas of the South, Mahamegvahna dynasty was established in Kalinga. The Manchpuri cave inscription describes Kharvela's son as Maharaja Kalingadhipti Mahamegvahna Kudipasiri. Another inscription at Guntupalli in West Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh. In 1st century BC in the same Brahmi script and Prakrit language refers to Mahamegvahna Kalingamahis Kadiptisirisada. Setarajvaswadhanena has been interpreted as one who increases the glory of the Sedi dynasty. The latest view in the regard is that Chetraja was the father of Kharvela. Kharvela, the son of Setraja, was the third ruler Mahamegvahna dynasty also known as Kalinga Rajvansa. The Hathigumpha inscription precisely records his career and achievements up to 13 years of his reign. Kharvela career as a prince the inscription opens with a salutation to the Jana saints and then gives us some ideas about the childhood and the boyhood of Kharvela before accession to the throne. It is said that he was born with auspicious physical marks and noble qualities which were indicative of his future greatness as a ruler. Till the fifteenth year, he spent his time in different types of sports and games. During this period he also acquired knowledge in different branches of learning which were essential for discharging royal duty such as writing or correspondence, lekha, finance, currency, rupa, arithmetic, ganana and law, VLDHL and vivahara. As a prince, Kharvela underwent training in the art of warfare, dhanuridya, music and dance, gandhar vidya and religion. In the fifteenth year he became the crown prince and started probation in the practical field of administration. At the age of twenty-four, he was crowned king by assuming the title Kalingadhipti and gave his subjects a sound administration. Kharvela Career as a Ruler After describing his early life up to the age of twenty-four, the Hatigumpha inscription chronologically recounts the events of his thirteen-year reign. First regnal year, his capital has been renovated. In his first year as regent, he engaged in renovation work, repairing the gates and structures of his capital Kalinganagra, which had been destroyed by a fierce cyclone. He hired laborers to dig a deep lake and create lovely gardens. In the same year, these repairs and other public works cost him 35 lakhs of coins from the royal exchequer. This fact has been amply corroborated by the Shishupalgad excavation, which uncovered remnants of defensive ramparts, gateways and high rovers. Second Regnal Year Expedition Against the King of Satavahana Kharvela commanded a sizable army that included infantry, cavalry, an elephant force and chariots. After making adequate preparations, he launched an expedition against Shatakarniai, the powerful Satvahan king, in the second year of his rule. 
Shatakarniai ruled a vast empire that included what is now northern Maharashtra, western Madhya Pradesh, and the Andhra region. Karvela's army advanced to the Krishna River and besieged Rishiknagra, which was clearly within Satavahana territory. Third regnal year, the amusement of his subjects. In the third year following the southern campaign, Karvela entertained his subjects. In his third regnal year, Kalinganagri, Karvela's capital, was overcome with joy and jubilation. Karvela possessed a mastery of all forms of music and dance. He organized a variety of performances that combined dance and music, both vocal and instrumental. He also organized ceremonials and social gatherings for the entertainment of his subjects, which included feasting and merrymaking. Fourth Regnal Year Campaign in the South In the fourth regnal year, the Kalinga Vodrum was hard once more. Karvela rallied his forces and marched back towards the Deccan. The Ratikas and Bhojkas territories to the south and north of the Nasik region were conquered. The Ratikas and Bhojkas honoured Karvela with homage and booty. Fifth Regnal Year Canal Extension from Tansulia to Kalinganagri the fifth year of Karvela's reign reflects his role as a benevolent king. Karvela extended the canal from the Tansulia road to Kalinganagri in this year. This canal was dug 300 or 103 years ago by King Nanda, a Nanda king, for irrigation purposes. Sixth regnal year, taxes remitted. Karvela did not wage war in the sixth year of his reign, instead devoting himself to his subjects' welfare. He absolved his kingdom's urban and rural areas of taxes and benevolences. This demonstrates unequivocally that Karvela's treasury was brimming with wealth. As a benevolent ruler, he took on the responsibility of remitting taxes to his adoring subjects in order to win their hearts. Seventh Regnal Year Acquiring Fatherhood Karvela became a father in the seventh year of his reign. His queen, dubbed the Queen of Vaziragra, gave birth to a son. Eighth Regnal Year, Northward Expedition Karvela led an expedition to the north in the eighth year of his reign, attacking the city of Rajagriha and destroying Gorthagiri, which was located on the Barbara Hill in the Gaya district. His victory at Rajagriha instilled fear in the Yavnas who occupied Mathura at the time. They had a plan to attack Magadh following their success in that region. Hearing of Karvela's exploits, the Yavna king fled Mathura. The Yavna ruler, whose name is uncertainly read as Dimita or Dimta, could be Demetrius or Minander, as several scholars have speculated. He had amassed considerable booty during that northern war campaign. Ninth Regnal Year – Establishment of the Great Victory Palace In the ninth year of his reign, he spent 38 lakhs of coins to construct the Great Victory Palace, Mahavijaya Prasadam, to commemorate his victory in the northern campaign. He had also distributed the spoils of his exploits among his empires, Brahmans and Arhats. Tenth Regnal Year Campaign in Northern India In the tenth year, Karvela, the embodiment of political, diplomatic and peace principles, directed the army toward North India in search of conquest, but the outcome was obscure. Eleventh Regnal Year Expedition against the Confederacy of the South He defeated a confederacy of southern powers in his eleventh year. The Southern Powers Confederacy included the Cholas, Pardyas, Satpurias, Keralputras, and Tamraparnis. He amassed a sizable collection of jewels, pearls, and precious stones as a token of his allegiance. Twelfth Regnal Year Campaign against Brihaspati Mitra Karvela led a campaign against Brihaspati Mitra, Magad's Sunga ruler with a vast army, in the twelfth regnal year. He dealt a crushing defeat to both the Magdhan and Anga kings. 
मगध एंड अंगा बोर्ड इन रेवरेंस एंड रिस्पेक्ट टू खरवेला बाय डिफीटिंग बृहस्पति मित्रा ही रिक्लेम्ड द कलिंगा जीना द रिवियर्ड इमेज ऑफ कलिंगा एज अ ट्रॉफी फॉर हिज विक्ट्री विच हैड बीन टेकन थ्री हंड्रेड और वन हंड्रेड एंड थ्री ईयर्स अर्लियर बाय अनंदा किंग मोस्ट लाइकली महापद्मानंदा एडिशनली ही ब्रॉट अ वास्ट वेल्थ फ्रॉम अंगा एंड मगध इंडीड Karvela avenged the Kalingans defeat at the hands of the Nanda king who had stolen Kalinga's Jina image. The scene of Bhasatimita's surrender at the feet of Karvela is depicted in Udayagiri's Rani Gumpha. A scene from the Manchpuri cave depicts Karvela's installation of Kalinga Jina. Following his victory over the Magdhan king, The Naga king of central India and the Pandya king of south India recognized Karvela's suzerainty. The Naga king presented him with jewels, elephants, horses and deer. Additionally, the Pandyan king sent him jewels as a token of his loyalty. 13th regnal year cave construction. Karvela probably abandoned military activities in the 13th year of his reign and devoted himself to religious pursuits he constructed 117 caves at kumari parvata udayagiri for jana monks other monks shears and arhats this was his distinguished service to the jana and other monks he resurrected the ancient kalinga mukhya kala art and architecture which were on the verge of extinction In that year he constructed images of Jana Tirthankaras trees creepers and images of royal servants in various caves of Udyagiri and Khandagiri The date of Kharvela The date of Kharvela is highly debatable We can date Kharvela using clues from the Hatigumpha inscription Ashoka captured the kingdom of Kalinga in 262 to 262 BC The Hathi Gumpha inscription suggests that shortly after Ashoka's death, Kalinga regained its independence from the Maurya Empire and Karvela was born in an independent Kalinga. In 1885, the colonial era epigrapher Bhagwan Lal Indraji interpreted the 16th line of the Hathi Gumpha inscription as a reference to Maurya Kala and the 165th year after this new timeline, which he termed the Mauryan era. According to Indraji, Karvela was born in 127 BC and ascended to the throne in 103 BC. Scholars questioned Indraji's interpretations, which have been largely rejected. According to Sudhakar Chattopadhyay, the 16th line does not mention Maurya Kala, Maurya era, but reads Mukhya Kala. The description of Karvela's fifth regnal year in the Hathi Gumpha inscription. according to chattopadhyay implies that karvela flourished tivasasata years after the nandaraja nandaraja is identified by hem chandra rai choudhury as mahapadma nanda or one of his sons the term tivasasata can mean either 103 or 300 years however chattopadhyay does not accept the former interpretation because it would contradict ashoka's records He dates Karvela to the second half of the 1st century BC or the first half of the 1st century C based on this evidence. According to this inscription, Karvela defeated Magadhan king Bhasati Mita in the 12th year of his reign, Brihaspati Mitra. Mitra was suffixed by the rulers of the Sunga dynasty, which arose in Magadh following the disintegration of the Mauryan Empire in 187 BC and ruled until 4230 BC. Pushya Mitra was the dynasty's first ruler, reigning from 187 BC to 151 BC. Certain scholars incorrectly associate Pushya Mitra with Brihaspati Mitra. Pushya Mitra's son Agni Mitra succeeded him as the hero of Kalidas drama Malviknagni Mitram. Following Agri Mitra, the Sangas became fray. Karvela most likely defeated a later Sunga king known as Brihaspati Mitra. As a result, his invasion of Magadh could have occurred sometime between 151 and 1940 BC. 
Another indication of Karvila's reign date is the statement in the Hatigumpha inscription that in the fifth year of his reign, Karvila renovated a canal dug by a Nanda, Nanda Raja, 103 or 300 years, Tibasasata, previously. According to some scholars, the Nanda Raja is identical to Mahapadanananda, the powerful founder king of Magad's Nanda dynasty, and Tibasata is there hundred years. In order to proceed in this direction, we must know the precise year of Mahapadmananda's reign's inception. Using 345 BC as the year of Mahapadmananda's canal digging, N.K. Sahu dates Karvila's coronation to 1940 BC. Kedarnath Mahapatra fixes the year of Karvila's coronation at 100 BC based on Puranic sources that state Nandas ruled for 100 years. Using 424 BC As the start of Nanda rule and Tibasaita as 300 years, Kedarnath Mahapatra fixes 100 BC as the year of Karvila's coronation. The Religion of Karvela the Hathi Gumpha inscription begins with a refined greeting to Arihants and Siddhas. In the Jain Pachanamaskara Mantra, in addition to the Arihants and Siddhas, three additional creatures are invoked. Other portions of the Hathi Gumpha inscription and the minor inscriptions discovered at Udayagiri from the 1st century BC contain Jain words. He is consequently commonly referred to as a Jain king. Other researchers, such as Paul Dundas, acknowledge that he was either a Jain or an ancient king who favoured Jainism and was lauded in an inscription at a Jain monument. However, the Hathi Gumpha inscription expressly states that he respected all religious sects, Savasana Pajko, and repaired temples dedicated to various gods. The verses of the Hathi Gumpha inscription provide several reasons to question Karvila's allegiance to the Jain tenet of Ahinsa. According to Dundas, the recurrent references to violence and warfare in the inscription indicate that Karvila did not entirely adhere to the Jain doctrine of Ahinsa. Helmut von Glasnap asserts that he was a Jain who favoured all of his subjects, especially Juns. The successor of Karvela Kulke and Radharmand both claim Karvila's kingdom indicate that the history of ancient India after Ashoka and Karvila is obscure. Given the absence of significant inscriptions by his successors, it is hypothesized that the Karvila empire dissolved shortly after his death. Little is known about the next two generations of monarchs, Vakradeva, also known as Kudepasiri or Vakdepa and Vadukha, but minor inscriptions at Udaygiri provide some information. So, this is the end of this video. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. To get the note of this video scan the above QR code or check description to get the link. Thanks for watching have a beautiful day.